there's no denying that 2020 has been a complete wreck for so many people. But I believe in entrepreneurs. I believe in resiliency. But I get it. You are so overwhelmed right now and you may be feeling the crunch of finances, not being able to see people, decline in business. But guess what? There is a way that you can spend time working on your business right now, adding on different ways to make money, diversify your business. And so I am bringing on one of my friends and colleagues that is an industry leader to help talk through this. While the episode is a little photographer specific, it can be applied to all sorts of businesses. I share a bit about myself, what I've done this year. Brian, my guest, also does with his business as well. So join us. Let's do this. Let's set ourselves up so that 2020 can be in the rear view mirror. We can move into 2021 with the lessons that we learned this year, diversifying, simplifying, and growing our business to success. Welcome to the Business Bites Podcast, the podcast for busy entrepreneurs. Whether you're an online entrepreneur or seeking after brick and mortar success, this podcast brings you quick bites of content so you can learn and grow anywhere you are. Now here's your host, Rachel Brainke. You're listening to the Business Bites Podcast, so you obviously know how important it is to be successful as a photographer. And hey, I get it. My name is Brian Capricci, and I've been a professional wedding and portrait photographer for 15 years. Seven years ago, I had the idea for what is now Sprout Studio. Sprout Studio is a studio management suite that gives you everything you need to run your business in one place. A CRM, galleries, email marketing, scheduling, bookkeeping, and much more. 2020 has been hard, and we want to help you get back on your feet. That all starts with getting organized, streamlining your communications, and leveling up the customer experience that you give to your clients. This Black Friday, for the first and last time ever, you can save 30% for up to three years with Sprout Studio, and you'll also get a redo 2020 package. We've basically built a photography business in a box for you with all the tools, templates, and strategies to help you reset 2020 and start 2021 on the right foot. We've already helped tens of thousands of photographers around the world with all of this, and we'd love to help you too. The best part is that you don't have to wait until Black Friday to make an impulse decision on this. Hop on over and start a trial now so that come Black Friday, you're confident in your decision. Visit SproutRedo.com slash podcast to learn more and make 2021 your best year yet. Hello, friends. Welcome to another week of the Business Bites podcast. I am thrilled for this topic because it is something that I have wanted to bring to the forefront. I mean, come on. We all want to redo 2020 and get our business better than ever in 2021. I have my friend, Brian Cavaricci, who is an award-winning photographer based out of Canada. He is the host of Business of Photography podcast, which yours truly has been on, and also teaches workshops and is the CEO and founder of Sprout Studio. He is such a smart, thriving, successful entrepreneur, and I'm just thrilled, Brian, for you to come on and let's chit chat about this topic. I would like to say that I'm excited. I am excited to be on Rach, but not to talk about this, but you know, <laughs> we we were given we were given lemons of 2020, so you know, I guess we're here to make some lemonade today. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm excited, not that we're in these circumstances, but I'm excited there are possibilities, you know. And we're going to go into all these steps, but like mind shift, looking for different opportunities that are available because like you said, we have lemons. You know, you want to make lemonade, I want to make a lemon drop martini, whatever your drink of choice. <laughs> you know, it's, it's what you got to do. You know, it's what you got to do with 2020. But before we dig into that, give us just a little background into your entrepreneurship journey and then we'll dig in. Yeah, for sure. So I have been a professional photographer for 15 years. And the funny thing about all of that is I actually started my photography business rage before I even owned a camera. So I started my business. uh, It was called Memories in Motion back in the day. This is like 2005, 2006 when 
you know, digital was kind of a new thing. So we called it digital memory preservation, this like fancy <laughs> word that we made up back in the day. And so I registered this business. And then literally the next day I walked over to Henry's, you know, a local camera store. And uh, I said, hey, I'm uh, I started a photography business, so I need to buy a camera. <laughs> <laughs> and so I kind of then worked my way, obviously, forward from there. But um, the difference for me anyways, is that I always looked at what I do as being an entrepreneur first and being mm -hmm. a photographer second. You know, photography just happened to be the space I was in, but I always looked at myself as being in business first. And I think that's how I was able to achieve the success the way that I defined it um, through my career now of 15 years. That's incredible. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you're not a photographer, there is still going to be plenty of information to glean from it. We are just going to give you some very photography specific examples and you can apply it over into whatever industry you're in. But in line with what you were just talking about, Brian, you know, we want to look at these opportunities and kind of see what's available. I feel like oftentimes as creatives, we have a tendency to not kind of open the mind up and look around. You know, we're very trying to stick with creating and passionate, but then on the business side of things, kind of like falling into normalcy. Like how do we, how do we even brace and break out of that since we're kind of forced to right now? Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things, you know, creatives love the thing that they do and they don't love the business of the thing that they do. <laughs> and, and that's <laughs> unfortunately um, what I've seen over the last eight months is that I mean, that's always been the case, right? You and I, we've been talking about that for a long, long time. You've got your mm -hmm. podcast. Or I've got 440 some odd episodes of ours. Like it's it's a topic that's always been front of front and center for so many of us. But I think that the current 2000, like, 2020 this year sort of like shone the spotlight on it a little bit in the sense mm -hmm. that those that maybe hadn't planned that way or hadn't thought that way or hadn't, uh, ha you know, built the right business model – um, it, it sort of agitated that problem, I think, for a lot of folks. And so I think really it's not too late because it kind of looks like 2020 is going to sort of spill a little bit into 2021, I think. And so yeah. it's, you know, it's not <laughs> over. We're still going through this and the recovery is going to be very grand. And, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. sooner that you can get your head into a space of thinking about how can you shift your thinking? How can you shift the way that you deal with your clients? How can you shift... Um, your business model, the sooner you can do that, the sooner you can get to a better place um, with your business. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting throughout this whole thing, you know, I have done all my own episodes, I've gone on other podcasts, and I've been very hesitant, but I've been standing firm in what I'm about to say, in that I feel like there are silver linings that come out of COVID when it comes directly to the impact on businesses. Because if you look around at many su successful entrepreneurs, yourself, myself, many of our colleagues, we're doing and have been doing things in the past that have led to a fairly, I would say fairly pandemic proof, not that it's been like perfect and easy, but because we had already adopted certain type of business models before, it kind of was more of a seamless type transition, you know, doesn't mean it was easy, but it was more of a seamless transition. And for me, you know, it's gonna sound weird, but I like I get excited for seeing many, especially creatives getting forced and pushed out of their box to do these kind of things because there's other benefits than just surviving a pandemic. You know, there's the benefits of being able to set themselves up for success in the future. We don't know what the future holds inside of COVID outside or just what your life circumstances might change on a dime. And so for me, that's kind of as this process has gone along, I've been, I don't know, it just sounds so weird to say, but like I've been excited for what can happen on the other side for those that do, like you said, embrace new business models. So in that, like, what would you suggest on how even to sit and look at your current business model? Or, well, maybe that's the better question. When we're looking at trying to make changes, should a listener who's sitting here ready to take notes go, okay, do I make a change on my current business model during a pandemic? Or should the framework start with how it was prior and then move into this area? I mean, I think we need to start working with what we know best, which is probably for most of us, the space that we're currently in. And mm -hmm. I believe that in any space, again, like I've been teaching a lot to photographers, but again, these principles can apply really in any area. Mm -hmm. If we look at what we do, I love the, con the sort of construct of looking at this whole box that you've just talked about in the sense of, yeah, we definitely need to step outside of the box because 2020 has kind of taken that box and punted it across the, across the, say, the field, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, look at that. Yeah, it's a dumpster fire. And so, I mean, it is what it is. 
And I think the sooner that you as a entrepreneur, as a creative, as a maker, as a photographer, whatever you are, as soon as you start thinking outside of that box, um, there's a lot of opportunities there. Now, that might mean a big shift. I mean, maybe it means starting a new business. Who knows? But maybe that doesn't have to be as dramatic um, if that doesn't feel like it's the right move for you. I think that there's a lot of opportunities even within your own space. You just start have to start looking at what you're doing a little bit differently. I want to touch on something you just said right there because I kind of had my own gut reaction as a, you know, a photographer and being in the photography space as well. You know, there is this big perception or feeling that if a photographer, and this is from photographer to photographer, not from photographer to client or so forth. But there is this feeling in the industry that if a photographer turns from just doing photography, all of a sudden they start teaching or selling presets or do graphic design or open up another business entirely to have like multiple income streams that they're not a real photographer at that point. And so I feel like there's resistance, especially when giving this recommendation, even though that's almost the way out of the box here. (laughs) <laughs> How dramatic should I be with the answer to this one? Um, do it. You know, do I it. think I think the thing at the end of the day is, and and this is something I've believed in now for a long, long time. And again, I think the pandemic has sort of just agitated it. This whole idea this is going to turn a lot of people off, but this whole idea of like Go for it. only do one thing and only do that one thing really well. I don't think it's ever worked. I think maybe in in concept, in theory, maybe. It's been one of those things that the few up on stage could say, that's what you should do. But then you also look at their revenue stream and say, well, yeah, but how are you making money? You're not making money doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. You're making money teaching Mm -hmm. that now. So I don't think that that works. I think especially now in 2020, especially now moving forward in the next five or 10 years, diversity is going to be the name of the game. Like figuring Mm -hmm. out how do you take your skill set and apply it in an entrepreneurial way. That is the name of the game. Now, that might mean selling presets, making courses, doing education, writing templates, like whatever. Or it could just mean, hey, if you're just a really, really good photographer, what other skill sets do you have? Like, you know composition better than most people. You know lens choice better than most people. You know perspective. You know lighting. You know angles. You know posing. Well, could you get into video maybe? Mm-hmm. Could you get into mm-hmm. visual coaching? Could you get into styling for other people's videos and, and you know, ad campaigns? Mm. Could you get into stock photography? Could you get into helping people live stream things? Could you get into teaching local photography classes? Could you get into helping with website design? Could you partner with a web company and say, hey, I want to help mm. you guys help your clients make better websites because I can now give advice based on photography and composition and color comp and color harmony mm. and all those things. Like there's there's so many things when you start to look at what are your skills what do you bring to the table most of the time if i were to ask a room of photographer what's your skill they'd say it's photography i say no it's not what is your skill and i think now we have to dig deeper into that we have to understand what is your skill what do you bring to the table and how can you help people with that and i think it's important that we kind of put this on the table Before y'all jump into writing this whole list, which I think is wonderful, Brian has said, you know, put your skill out there, write a list, get a piece of paper now and do it. But understand, we're not encouraging you to go and open up seven different income streams right now and make it happen. Like, and and going back to what you were saying earlier, this whole mindset of have one thing, do it well, and only do that. I feel like those that preach you should only have one just haven't either reached what they needed to. They haven't mastered that one to open up the space to open up another one, or maybe they just didn't have the balls to move to another one, you know, another income stream, add on an income stream as well is be, and I feel like I am kind of one of those. And I say this humbly who has built in these silos where I build in one industry very well. And then I go, that is then maintained. I keep that income stream and I move to the next industry and do the same thing. So I guess I want to caution to those listening Don't go, okay, well, here's 10 different really good skills I'm good at. I'm going to go create 10 different income streams. You'll be the jack of all trades, master of none at that point. I feel like you can master one at a time to build that up. Do you agree with me, Brian, or are you going to push back? And I'm good for the No, you know what? I mean, I would agree it in the sense of like, Rach, you don't do photography law. That's not what you do. That's not your skill set. Your skill set is giving entrepreneurial advice and giving education Mm -hmm. to creative entrepreneurs and giving legal input on things, helping them build systems, build proper processes and procedures. That's what you do. And so, yeah, you can go into really any space and do that. You can go in and Mm -hmm. do that in the form of 
a podcast, in the form of a template, in the form of a course. And so that's, I guess, more what I mean is like really looking back and digging deeper into the root of the skill set, into the root of what you're actually good at doing and how you can help people and figuring out how does that get applied. And yes, that doesn't mean that you go and launch like eight different law businesses and eight different <laughs> industries all at once. For mm-hmm. sure, you have to build it in at the rate that you can build it, obviously. I've tried like, it. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work, right? But that's the thing is I think so many people often just, they, they put themselves, again, coming back to that box, they put themselves in that box, photographers included. You know, photographers are saying, well, look, I'm a wedding photographer. And I say, yeah, but who's to say that you can't also do portraiture, right? And maybe mm-hmm. if you already do portraits, who's to say that you can't do, offer an influencer package? Or who's Mm -hmm. to say that you can't offer a recurring revenue stream for portraits? Like, why couldn't you offer a family portrait plan? Or why couldn't you pre-sell packages? Or why couldn't you do gift certificates? I mean, there's so many different ways. I mean, you can even stay in your space. If you're a photographer, for example, Mm -hmm. you could stay in your space, but just pre-sell things or do subscriptions or, or do it event style or do mini sessions. Or there's so many other ways that you could just start to think about the idea of generating revenue, even if it is in the same space. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here sketching this out, obviously, for notes for us to have for everyone on the show notes page. But I'm seeing the path and trajectory because even for myself at the beginning of um, COVID, when everything was locked down, which as we were talking pre-show <laughs> and Brian's in Canada, I'm in the United States, we're looking like we're facing towards that again. I had many friends who would reach out to me and they would say, well, I needed new photos. You know, my photographer can't photograph right now because we're shut down. It's illegal. It's against mandate. And so I was finding myself being like, okay, because these are not photographers that I'm helping, right? That were coming to me. There are people that are trying to hire photographers, but they needed photography insight to take their own photos during lockdown. And so that Mm -hmm. to me is another great income stream because I see many influencer online personal brands who are not photographers that need help talk to them you know you could walk them through what kind of lights do they need to take self portraits, etc. I mean, I just see like this broad range and you've if y'all feel like you haven't heard many ideas you need to pause go back because brian's probably given you like 30 ideas already of things that you <laughs> as a photographer can do just like that well and the thing too that's interesting is and and, and i had been teaching this for a long time through the pandemic we launched this whole thing called first aid which was just like a resource dedicated to helping photographers through this but mm-hmm. you have to also think like what are other businesses struggling through what are other people struggling through during this you know we i kept using examples of like well restaurants like restaurants Mm. obviously i mean i feel so horribly for restaurants during these times because i mean gosh that can't be easy i even think now going into winter time when restaurants here locally i mean we're in canada where we get snow and so you can't even have patios anymore in the winter time because it's too darn cold so Mm -hmm. their business is going to drop even more but how could we help them as photographers if you're a photographer how could you help them well they need all of a sudden now to have an online store for people to, mm-hmm. to order to take out. Well, they need photos for those online stores. Well, they need to start building a social media presence. And maybe they hadn't done that before because they were some local mom and pop shop and had never really gotten into that space. Well, could mm-hmm. you help them with that? Or could you help them with, you know, photos of their delivery drivers to fill up their, you know, Uber Eats profile properly? Or there's all, I mean, that's just one very, very specific example. But like, why couldn't you help in that space for that industry. And Mm -hmm. what I've been recommending to photographers and to any entrepreneur is, you know, virtually in in your head, I guess, you know, mentally put yourself in your car and drive around your local area and look everywhere, look left, look right, look up, look down, whatever. There's people everywhere that can use your help. Mm -hmm. You help them and just do that drive. And you're going to be like, Oh, there's that yoga studio. And they're probably now having to shift to doing online yoga. They don't know the first thing about cameras and live streaming and posing and this and lighting. And like they don't know anything about that stuff. You could help them. What about the local gardening shop? What about the local restaurant? What about the winery? What about that that family that just got you know laid off? That the, the breadwinner of the family got laid off, and now all of a sudden he's trying to teach sales through social media because yeah. he wants to be an influencer now and he lost his nine to five but he doesn't have any photos. He needs some lifestyle shots. He needs some headshots. He needs Mm -hmm. some photos of him and his kids for his social media. Like there's so many different things that you can think of as soon as you take yourself out of that box that we had otherwise put ourselves in. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's interesting, and I'm sure you've done the same as I've talked to many photographers and just actually entrepreneurs in general to see how they're pivoting. Because uh, actually, in the very beginning of COVID, like I said, from the very beginning of this, and I hesitate to say, but I've been encouraged to see the changes that so many uh, entrepreneurs and large companies are making. And I loved watching in the beginning, um, like how was edible arrangements started doing delivery of, um, actual whole fruit as opposed to just their like fruit and chocolate mm-hmm. they were offering because they had all this produce that they still needed to sell. And it was a better way to do it. I know our local, um, this really fancy restaurant downtown, I've never had good service in restaurant. Sorry, I, I, you know, I, I try to support them. So what we did during pandemic was they were selling because they had all these contracts for suppliers. They had all this meat that needed to be sold. And we had like the best pork chops possible. And one of the good things, and I guess I'm kind of bringing this to the forefront is you're looking at it from how can you business to business standpoint, but you could also consumer to business standpoint. Like I made connections with some of these businesses because I tried to help still help them survive during pandemic and just made sure that I reached out to them by social, encouraged them so that when pandemic, you know, ends or business comes back around, I'm in the forefront of their mind. They remember that I'm the lawyer that's the office right down the street that also helped them <laughs> during pandemic because I knew that they needed support and I needed to eat. Um, I guess just looking at it from a variety of perspectives is so important. I do want to back up real quick because and maybe you can kind of help me sparse out the buckets here. You were talking adi- originally a little bit about what are some of your best skills and what could you offer? So we were looking at, all right, maybe a photographer, you could also do like all this consulting, et cetera. Then there was another bucket of still offering like photography services. I know I've seen many photographers who shifted from uh, portraits to now doing product shots, having the products sent to their house, photographing the products for these online shops, et cetera. Because FYI, even if that's something you don't necessarily want to get into for the long term, it can help you in the interim. But if you were looking at getting into like commercial photography, this is a good way to dip your toes in. Um, Because I am really encouraged and hopeful that many of these businesses, you know, you're talking like the Uber Eats profile, the online shop and so forth. I don't think any of that is going away. Um, I talked to many fitness business owners who said, no, we still plan to do our online fitness even after we're open back up in in person. So that is something that you can either look at this as a short-term gain with a local business, or you could be facilitating for a long-term business relationship with them as well. Yeah, I, I think I think that's actually really important. And a lot of folks haven't thought about the fact that all these things that we're pivoting and thinking about and talking about and these different things that have changed with businesses – I think it's just paving the way for where things are going. I think mm-hmm. that that folks are going to be a lot more um, aware and conscious of of these of of you know health regulations, and they're going to be a lot mm-hmm. more conscious of where they go and who they're going with, and and what their safety and health precautions are for it. And you know, all these business models, I see online shopping going up. I see so many businesses oh, yeah. needing to adapt and continue to adapt to that. And so, I think these things that we're doing now almost like quickly to be like, oh, how do we like survive? That's going to just become the new norm as we move forward, I think. Which I actually thought of something while you were talking. Think about it. Everything is went virtual. I mean, what I don't even know the statistics, but like Disney Plus, Hulu, Netflix, everything went through the roof. You know, online yeah. social numbers are up. What is it that everyone's looking at on social? Pictures, mm-hmm. video. Yeah. <laughs> They're looking at visual um, elements, visual aesthetics. Y'all got this in the bag. So for me, like, I'm like, just think outside the box. I know for me, um, I was talking to a birth photographer who was like, well, I don't even know what I can do. I can't go into hospitals. And I was like, girlfriend, let's just take two seconds and look at this. You she ended up doing some photography as the, once they came outside the hospital, the whole like following them, putting the baby in the car, taking them home. She couldn't go into their house, obviously, but could document that. She moved into the space of doing a lot of photography for Etsy shops or um, in, any of just like these, you know, pacifier, rattle, toy type. Um, they don't necessarily have to be Etsy confined. But just for me, it's like just think of what you can add Because I know that there's this fear of, well, if I'm a wedding photographer, why would I be offering commercial photography? Well, you don't have to go from like wedding photographer to all of a sudden doing product shots of, I don't know, tennis balls. Like you could do it for 
you there's um, invitation designers that are still needing photography. They're still trying to pump things out because weddings are still semi happening. You know, look how within the field of what you're already offering is a seamless transition. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of parallel spaces that you could go into, but I think even too beyond that, my argument is to encourage those listening to sort of drop those chains that you might feel confined to. And, and I, I see this all the time. Again, like you say, Rach, with like, well, I'm a wedding photographer. Why would I get into doing, uh, you know, families? Uh, well, because you want to keep food in your table. That that would yeah. be why you do that. Because right now and moving forward, doing that one thing only may not be a viable option. And hey, if it is, if you can make it work, I'm happy to like to be wrong on that. But I think... That so many people in so many industries right now, and again, I talk about photography, we got to let go of this whole, like, I do this one thing and only this one thing because I just don't think it's a sustainable way of running a business, especially during a global pandemic. So we've kind of given them, them listening, the path here in a way. You've given them a bunch of these ideas. So how do they take the next steps to actually implement and move into these spaces. And, and I think the, the theme in my head as we're talking, I keep thinking about is money. Got to have financial resources. Some people mm-hmm. just are not making ends meet right now. Yeah, I, I see I see five buckets, Rach. I, I've kind of like thought through, and I think a lot of these things can really be kind of boiled down to five different categories. And obviously within each of them, there's there's hundreds and hundreds of ideas. But the five categories are this. I'll, I'll run through them. Number one, you've got to refocus your energies on relationships. And you mm-hmm. have to make sure that you build empathy into everything you do in your business. That's mm-hmm. huge. I think relationships are going to be the number one form of currency moving forward. So you've got to make sure that you're being empathetic and that you're focusing on relationships in your business. Number two, you have to differentiate what you do. You you can't just be a me too person anymore. You've got to really think hard and long about what makes you tick, why someone would choose you over somebody else. So you have to differentiate. Mm -hmm. Number three, you have to focus on guiding and serving others. I think that's really important because for Mm -hmm. so long, especially in the photography industry, photographers have always thought that they were the hero of the story. And I hate to break it to you photographers, but it's not about you, right? It never has been about you, but I think now it's even more obvious that it's not about you. So you have to start thinking about putting your clients first. Number four, it's really important for you to get organized through all this because as you start to break into other spaces, explore other revenue streams, take on other kinds of clients, if you're not organized, you're going to start to let things fall by the wayside. So get organized. And number I'm five. I'm right there. Hold yeah. on before you go to number five. I want to yes. add on to that. Do it. Organize also includes your legal protection going oh, into 100%. industries. <laughs> 100%. I guess when I say organized, I don't even mean like – physical structural organization but like dudes get your systems in place get your get your get your workflows in place get your Mm -hmm. templates in place get your contracts in place like if oh my gosh if there's been anything ever in business that's been like a smack in the head to be like you better have good contracts it's been 2020 like 2020 showed up and says like Get your stuff together, you know, anyways. And I'm over so, here. I'm like that Kermit meme with the T. I'm like, I've been telling yeah. you all this for yeah. years, but yeah. I'm still going to help you. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, so number four, yeah, get organized. And number five, which is which has sort of been the theme of this whole conversation this far, is you got to diversify your revenue streams. You got to figure out how else can you earn money? How else can you make money in ways that are potentially non-conventional in the way that you've thought about your business before? And I, and I love that because, and this is something that I've been learning is that go with the low hanging fruit. So, you know, with number five and diversifying, you don't have to come out the gate with like a perfectly polished product or service. You don't have to have a perfectly polished social media presence and website, et cetera. Does it help? Sure. But like just getting it out there and I almost, because I'm hearing many clients say this, you know, cause I am on that end where I'm seeing the legal issues y'all are having. And I'm also hearing the, you know, the heartbreak of decline in income et cetera. And my heart goes out. So when you're looking at how can you add something on, 
just know you don't have to, it doesn't have to be like probably what you thought before. We had to come out gangbusters and perfect. Use it in the mindset of how can I get some quick cash in the door? Now, I'm not saying go out and do whatever you can for cash. I'm just saying, okay, if you come up with this idea of, you know, like what Brian was talking about, what is your best skill in this? You know, what do you want to offer as another income stream? You can low hanging fruit do it. Let's take like the consulting example that you gave earlier, Brian. You know, and I and I kind of threw mine in too. But these businesses need help on how to do lighting and streaming and this sort of stuff. You could easily just put it out there and do a thirty minute call, get a paid thirty minute call, and then you could then move into having packages. Like you don't have to come out the gate with everything perfect. Well, and I, it's actually funny because I, I, as you were saying all that, I kind of wrote down in this space because I know how I know how so many of us think where. We have to make this like perfect little package that's just perfectly perfect in every way. It's like, no, like, mm-hmm. okay, maybe, maybe traditionally that's the way that you want to run your business. You're type A, you want things to be, you know, all lined up and your T's crossed and your I's dotted. But 2020 is the year of the imperfect, <laughs> you know, it is, that's what it's all about. And I think right now it's more important for us all to be humans and we talk to people from one human to another human, we're all in this together. I think that's more important than this like polished perfection. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean that you show up wearing your sweats and you look like a slob. I just mean, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, that might be what you look like on a Zoom call. That's okay. As long as you have a business <laughs> shirt on top, it's all good. I'm wearing sweatpants right now, but I got the nice yeah, shirt thing. on, you can imagine, <laughs> uh, you know, but that's that's okay. And, and I think that's one of the things um, as we were going early days on um, in helping photographers figure out some new revenue streams. We actually launched, Rach, I don't know if you saw or not, but like we launched, I don't know, 50 different email marketing campaigns pre-written for photographers that basically gave them, with, with the click of a button, the ability to send out these emails and yes. make money. And in all of them, in all of them, the vibe was not like, look at me, I'm a professional photographer and here's this polished opportunity that I've created just for you, Mr. Client or Mrs. Client. No, it was instead like, hey, look, 2020 has been hard and it's affected everybody in different ways. I've seen yoga studios move to doing online yoga. I've seen restaurants move to delivery. And I thought, hey, as a photographer, I should start offering something a little bit different too. So Mr. and Mrs. Client, here is something that I thought of for you. And it was just, it was this all of them had this transparent, very mm-hmm. open, very honest, very like raw, but not too raw kind of feel to it. And I think that's okay for 2020. I think that's what 2020 needs. And, you know, and that's yeah. one of the things, the pushback I've been hearing from many different entrepreneurs, but especially photographers is, well, if I out on something else, am I going to confuse my, you know, ideal client? Am I going to confuse my clients? And it's like, no, it depends on how you approach it. Plus everyone's pivoting right now. Everyone. You know what's <laughs> going to confuse your clients the most? And th- this is, this is, this is a, I can't even say this seriously. The thing that'll confuse your clients the most is when they think that you're this high-end wedding photographer and they go to get their Starbucks drink and they see you serving them your venti caramel brulee, <laughs> whatever the heck it is. And they say, hey, what are you doing there at Starbucks? And you say, well, I'm a high-end wedding photographer and that's all that I do. But I'll work for $7.85 here at Starbucks because mm-hmm. I refuse to do portraiture. It's like, no, get your get your head out of the sand, people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else in that too, but yes, like, you know, no, but it is true. You know, and Brian and I are not sitting here from like this ivory tower. We've had our own pain points oh, gosh, this year. No. We've had to, you know, for me, the word of the year was simplify. Just between mm-hmm. personal stuff, COVID, and, you know, and I have multiple teams that I have to financially support, especially since many of them, you know, were photographers, their businesses have gone down, et cetera. Like my, the income that I pay them is even more important. And so we understand the struggles of this. I just feel like you and I and you know many entrepreneurs who have been thriving not just surviving but thriving through pandemic had already put this kind of stuff into place prior now and so I I want to share that to say like again we're not like speaking down and judging y'all on this I am just I just want to see y'all embrace this like I just want to see the changes and Get out of the fear. And if anything, if 2020 has done nothing but push you outside your comfort zone, good. Get out of that box. Get uncomfortable because I want to see the changes because then I, you know, it's funny. I'm getting off. I'm getting on my own soapbox here. Hey, hey, hey. 
<laughs> people want to feel like we have to have such like this polished presentation. We don't want to confuse people. I actually am looking around, not judging, but looking around at so many entrepreneurs and I know they're struggling and, but their online presence looks perfect. And I'm thinking, but you're not doing what needs to be done right now. But those that are imperfectly doing what needs to be done, I'm like, Fuck yeah. Yeah. yeah, like they're doing it. And I'm not confused. In fact, I have probably more faith and trust in them and anything that they're going to put out in the future. Well, and I think, again, to not be ignorant to the situation. I mean, if you're a business and you've got any kind of audience and, and like as an FYI, we all have an audience, right? I mean, yeah. you have your clients, no matter how big or how small. If you're a business and you're and you're and you're leading through this and like pretending like nothing is going on. That's going to do, I think, more harm than than Great. good. I mean, I think it's okay to just show a little bit of vulnerability and sort of it's okay to be openly and publicly figuring this out as we go. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I know for us at Sprout, I mean, literally, you know, Rach, you said simplify. Our our word of the year has been pivot. Like every it's mm -hmm. our, our year, 2020, has been pivot after pivot after pivot. And mm -hmm. for us, it's all been with a tilt of trying to do anything and everything we can do to help photographers yeah. because it has been such an uncertain year. And because so many photographers typically don't have that entrepreneurial hat, we've been trying to do things like this to just help photographers through it. And mm -hmm. that's okay. Mm -hmm. Again, we don't have it figured out. We're trying to help you figure it out while we figure it out too. And that's, that's okay. Well, you know, and I think that's the thing too. This is not the time to have like this perfect plan, like we mentioned before, but definitely mm -hmm. don't, you know, I, I'm the MBA, I'm the business consultant, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I want to see like a 300 page five-year plan. This right. is, this ain't the year for it. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there is no five-year plan. I think there's like, there's barely a five, a five, five week plan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, well, we're recording this um, just before U.S. Thanksgiving. This will be rolling out the week of Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Um, so who knows? By then, we might be in lockdown again. I hope not. Right. Surely hope not. But the writing's on the wall. And so we just have to make the plans for it. So I think this is such a good, timely episode for us to have, for everyone to sit and take notes and really take action. Now, I kind of mentioned this earlier. Something that is, is like nagging at me a little bit is – you know, I always feel bad. No, let me rephrase that. I don't feel bad asking for money in business. I do feel bad sometimes when it's in this middle of this pandemic, but it, I struggle with this. I know a lot of people don't have money and I'm pitching them my services and products. And then the other side of it is, but I also have a family and mouse to feed too. Like, how do you, how would you, I don't know. What would you advise those listening who may be like excited? Okay, I want to put out these income streams. But like, let's say, let's take the restaurant example, like trying to reach out to these restaurants. Well, we know they're struggling. So, but how do you overcome that hurdle of, I know they're not financially doing well. How do I pitch them for money? So if you can think back to those five buckets that we talked about, I mm -hmm. think of the third one, you know, guiding and serving others yeah, and focusing yeah. on other people. I think if you're trying to sell ice to the Eskimos, then <laughs> I agree, right? It's like, come on, that's that's not now is not the time, right? Like mm -hmm. now is not the time for the snake oil salesman. And that's not, I think, what you or I are advocating right. for here. I think what we're saying is if there's a way that you can help other people, if there's a way that you can genuinely help other people, I think of the local greenhouse, I think of the local restaurant. They are struggling. Mm -hmm. And if you can help in some way keep them afloat, think about the impact that that has on them. Mm -hmm. And then the trickling effect that ha that has on all of their employees. And I'm not saying, you know, that, that you or I or, or anyone listening here is walking around with a cape on. But what I'm saying is that <laughs> if we can help other people and by yeah. proxy, that helps more people. And that helps more people. That helps more people. I mean, to ask for money in exchange of that is not a crime. We're helping people. Mm -hmm. We're doing something that has a genuinely positive impact on the local community, on on the, the employees, the local folks, their customers, the owners. Um, so there's so many ways that you can look at that. But I think that if you're going at it with just the intent of how do I make money quick? Well, that's that's the snake oil sales approach. I don't think that that 
works mm -hmm. today. Um, mm -hmm. But if we look at it through the lens of, well, how can I help other people using the skill set that I'm uniquely qualified to help? Then mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of ways that we can think of um, of helping without it being slimy. So a few things on that. One, I do have my cape on. Thank you very much. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sweatpants. We've established that. But no, yeah. you know, I've had a couple of you know, I've had some nasty social media messages and, and actually there's been a major uptick in them on Facebook ads, in the inbox and such. And I don't take it personally. I attribute it to, you know, life circumstances, world situation, mental issues. That's a whole nother conversation we could have. So, you know, this has not been good for many people's psyche and just mental state. Mm -hmm. So I don't take these personal, but you know, sometimes I still take a pause when they'll go, we're just preying on, um, praying on us during COVID. And I'm like, but here's the difference. I'm not trying to sell you something that you don't need. I'm trying exactly. to sell you something that is trying to help you. You know, when I said simplifying earlier, the other half of that is simplify to serve. You know, we had all these offerings and this year we really evaluated and I think we might have done it anyways, but we really stepped back through the lens of COVID and said, what can we do to serve people? And that's how we simplified things specifically at the Law Talk. That's how we made this shift and changes of how could we meet these major goals? One, well, we knew that education and legal supports were still needed. We also knew that a lot of income wasn't coming in, especially at the very beginning during lockdown. So how could we make it financially uh, feasible for as many people to be able to serve them as possible? And that's how we kind of shaped the offerings that we've moved to. Doesn't mean it won't change in the future, but that is how, if, if I had to respond, if I was going to respond to one of these nasty comments, it would be, well, first of all, you don't have to buy from me. <laughs> second huh. of all, like you're not forced to, but second of all, I'm here to serve. Like I could take this service and charge three or four more times for it, but I'm not. I've done it in a way to help serve to help you. And I don't say that from like, oh, pat me on the back, but because that has been one of my goals of entrepreneurship from the very beginning. Making money is great, but it really was about serving and helping other people be fulfilled in their life or in 2020, helping them get through 2020 as well. Yeah. I think, I think too, in, in a lot of these ideas that we've kind of thrown around and, you know, I keep going to this, you know, yoga studio example or the restaurant example or the greenhouse example. I don't think that there's going to be one formula that works for every single photographer or every single entrepreneur in any of these ideas. Yeah. I think you've almost got to look at it too individually. You know, I've, I've coached and taught so many photographers through this, well, tens of thousands of photographers through this. And I've said many times, it's like, Hey, if you, if you're trying to, you know, come up with these ways that you can help people. And if you talk to the local restaurant and they're just like, like, we can't pay for this right now. It's just, it's just, we don't literally, we can't, we can barely even afford to pay our employees. We can't pay for the service. Mm -hmm. Maybe it makes sense just for you to be like, you know what? I got gotcha. you. Like, let me help mm -hmm. you throw me a couple meals. Maybe let me, like, help me out with my family, whatever, but yeah. I want to be there to help. And I think if we approach all of this with that, you know, bucket number three, guiding and serving others, if we approach yeah. this with that as the primary focus, I think mm -hmm. you're going to find in the long term, the benefits and the impact that this can have on you and your business will come mm -hmm. around full circle. I'll tell you what, I'll do some photography or legal work for some of them pork chops from that place downtown. Yeah, there you they go. are <laughs> the best. <laughs> but I mean, but they, they, and I love that you kind of nailed it on the head without saying it, is getting creative. You know, there's other ways yeah. to get compensated. There's things that are needed during this time. We mm -hmm. um, you know you do trades, et cetera. I think, the key is finding what works for you. Um, if you're, is your goal to open up a whole new income stream, but you're not necessarily pressed for cash, great. Or maybe you're someone who is like, all right, I, I, the lights are going to be shut off soon. I got to get some money coming in the door. Then you're going to have to scale back and see what are some ways that you can serve and also still make some quick cash, you know, and that can change. Once you get your legs back under you, then you could shift back to how can I make this a long-term additional income stream? Um, I, yes, I'm excited because I think if, if y'all listening and I say this really with love, you can't see me, but like my hands are like towards the screen. Like I want to see y'all succeed and thrive through a pandemic, not just survive. And, and I believe that as entrepreneurs, we're extremely resilient. Um, we got into this for a reason and we have that fighting spirit. Do not let 2020 beat you down. Um, you know, take some grace for yourself, but don't let it beat you down. I think you guys can figure it out. And Brian's given a really good roadmap 
So this has been a good episode. Brian, do you have any last tips for the listeners before we send them back out there to attack the rest of 2020? Oh, man. Just take a breath. Take a breath. I mean, 2020 has beaten everybody up in so many different ways. And, you know, at the end of the day, I guess, is it, I think it's okay for us to say, Rach, like for you, for us just to like, be like, it's okay if like you're down, if you're, if yeah, you're, you know, yeah. not doing great, if, if you're struggling, if it's challenging or, or if it's doing great, it's like, congratulations, that's amazing. But like, everyone's going to deal with this differently. I think at the end of the day, you know, the only thing any of us can do is just put one foot in front of the other. That's all that we can do. And if we're, if we're worrying about what's happening a kilometer down the road, I mean, there's going to be a hundred forks in the road between now and then, like, because that's just the theme of 2020 pivot. Right. So, you know, take a breath, try not to let the stress overwhelm you and just try to get to a clear state of mind, breathe through it and take one step at a time. And that's, that's, you know, that's really the only thing that we can do to, to work our way through this year. Definitely. You know, this morning as I was getting around for my day, I realized how much I love the slower pace of Mondays in 2020, but that's because mm-hmm. I've been intentional with it. You know, used mm-hmm. to be, I thrived on the fast pace, get everything done, got to hop into work. And, and I was anxiety driven and just, you know, doesn't mean it didn't, some of it didn't pay off, but when 2020 hit, this whole virtual learning from home and just everything, I restructured my weeks so that Monday mornings are not this, you know, like balls to the wall, got to get going the second I wake up. And I just feel so much better when the week starts. And so I do think 2020, at least for that, is helping me to become more focused when I do work, restructure my week in a way that really emphasizes what's important. I'm starting to sound like a Hallmark commercial, but seriously, <laughs> it's true. Um, and so I think that's the big thing. Just like Brian said, take a deep breath. You know, if we've ever learned what's most important, now it is. If we've learned how to get automated, efficient, and focused, now's the time to do it. And don't give up this opportunity. You know, and that's something I keep telling myself, even when the kids are driving me crazy, they're screaming because they don't want to log on to their virtual school. I say, but I get more time with them. So like, love the opportunity, seize the opportunity that we have here, but recognizing we get it like stress, finances, all that's happening. Brian and I believe in you guys. So please go out, see what you can do to add on income streams, diversify, As always, in the Business Bites podcast Facebook group, we will have a thread dedicated to this episode. So please come in there and share your ideas, especially if you're a photographer. Since we were super heavy in photography talking today, I'm going to throw some more ideas in there that I have as well for y'all. So come join us and I will talk to you guys next week. Thanks for joining Rachel on this episode of the Business Bites. For show notes, a list of recommended tools or referenced episodes, you can find them at businessbitespodcast.com. Until next time.